Andy Gray with the uh, Kale and Company theme. Talked a lot about the local music scene. And uh, right now we have a gentleman on the line who has been involved with the uh, national and international music scene for years and years. John Setta, how are you this afternoon, John? Hey, Ken, how you doing? Doing great. How about yourself? I am uh, I am doing uh, terrific. Uh, pleasure to have you with us here on Kale and Company. And uh, Thank John, you. first of all, just uh, give us a, a thumbnail sketch of uh, of your background. Well, um, I I'm right now in a venture right now of uh, we have an online service that offers musicians to sell their music online to iTunes and 150 digital stores worldwide. Wow. We, we are the largest in the Western Hemisphere, and pretty soon we'll be the largest in the world. My goodness. Now, uh, I know you have a new uh, venture with Simon Cowell, uh, but uh, just, just give us a few of the artists uh, groups that, and groups that you have worked with in the past, John. Um, I've worked with artists like, uh, worked with three members of Sly and the Family Stone, Gregory Rico, Cynthia Robinson, and Jerry Martini. We did some recordings. Actually, I was the first guy to record them after 30 years of them not recording. So we did, uh, we did about 12 songs together. Uh, I used to play guitar with Giovanni Hidalgo. He was a Grammy winner, and he won a, a Grammy with Paul Simon on his Graceland record. And, um, let me see. I put a list here because sometimes there's a lot of them, but, uh, <clears throat> just recently worked with also with Marty Ballin about a year ago recorded some stuff with him and wow. you, you remember Marty he's from the Jefferson Airplane sure yeah yeah and uh, I've worked with a lot of Latin, Latin jazz artists uh, worked with a three time Grammy winner pianist who actually is a teacher out of Boston by the name of Tony Perez okay and uh, Juan Cobas, Grammy Award-winning engineer with Mark Anthony. Um, and that was actually a long time ago in a video with Little Richard, the Itsy Bitsy really? Spider video. Yeah, it was, uh, Little Richard, huh? Well, John Seto with us, and uh, we talked about uh, a venture with Simon Cowell. We all know Simon from American Idol and uh, The X Factor. And Tell us about the, uh, the new venture that uh, you and Simon are involved in. Actually, I don't. That that there must have been some kind of a misunderstanding. I don't have a venture with him. Uh, basically, what uh, what I was I was uh, was uh, was to talk about was uh, how YouTube is uh, creating uh, you know new things and and basically um, where um, how uh, the fact that uh, he's doing a promotion online right now. That's uh, reached that in one day he hit eighty thousand viewers and the whole show is going to be based a around um, uh, internet only promotion and internet only uh, seeking uh, artist. Um, but basically, my website bornamusician.com offers a service that uh, pretty much nobody else, uh, very few people do offer. Um, YouTube just started something about three months ago where they're watermarking all the music that comes into our site. So when a when an artist puts their music on on um, on YouTube, it automatically gets recognized um, uh, uh, through this watermark fingerprint system. Okay. So then the artist gets paid, which is the cool thing. And this is pretty much where I think you know, why Simon is doing what he's doing right now because uh, there's going to be a big change. There's going to be a big monetary change for artists now because you know for for quite some time it's really it's been difficult in the music scene. There's been a lot of uh, artists having to play for free and giving away sure. their music for free. Yep. So now it's turning around, which is great because, uh, let's say, for example, somebody takes your song and puts it on some little commercial without your permission or a friend of yours does it uh, or you or you place a video. Every time that gets viewed, you, you get paid for it now, whether wow. whether you put it up or not. Which is really Isn't that cool. right? Which so, is really cool. No, in other words, if I put up a, uh, we have a, you know, good friend by the name of Dusty Gray who has a band in this area. So if I put up a video of his, and uh, somebody watched it, mm -hmm. uh, he would get a residual from that. If it was run through like our service of bornemusician dot com yep. or somebody that has that similar service. Right now, uh, the only uh, the ones that are offering what we offer. Are basically we offer the same thing that the three majors offer, which is Sony, Universal, and Warner. Right. Um, if you go through our service, you actually get paid 60% more in America, and you get paid 40% more in Europe. So it gives the indie guy uh, an even playing field, but he has to run through a service like my own. So if you want to have Dusty uh, get in touch with me, I'd be glad to talk to him. 
Uh, okay, and what, what's the uh, the website again? It's bornamusician.com. All right, born, B-O-R-N-A, right? Yeah, born to be a musician. But it's not born to be a musician, it's born a musician. Which born one? a musician.com. Interesting. Right. Uh, John Seda with us, uh, uh, Seda, I should say, talking mm-hmm. about the music industry. And I guess this is obviously a sign that uh, the industry is, is changing. It is changing. And it's changing rapidly. Uh, I think what, I think what, in my opinion, what happened, what I noticed, because I've been, we've been working on this website uh, for a year now. Uh, we did beta testing in September, and we released it about a month ago. So um, uh, last year, around October, uh, October, November, uh, they had that uh, big thing where the Senate passed the SOPA Act, and Google shut down for a day, and right. you know they were trying to get the, you know the the royalties to be raised and to pay more money. So I think what it was it was a, it was a reaction of that. Uh, they said, "Well, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to do something because in the past, you know, one of the biggest problems that artists have faced is that the copyright amendments for the internet were never passed, and this has been going on for 15 years. And you know how it is that you know, there's lobbyists and there's you know special interest why some people wouldn't want that to happen because they have to pay more royalties out to artists. But the, the fact is that it that has to change because. Uh, it's not going to do any good to the music industry if, if the artists are not, uh, you know, compensated fairly for their intellectual property. And I'm, I'm a, bit, a big advocate of that. So um, uh, I believe that artists should be paid, paid fairly. And, then, and, um, and now it's, the change is coming. And, um, and actually there's a lot more, uh, how would you say, more avenues and better ways to promote yourself. So it actually gives you more exposure. Sure. Um, in the past, you know, everybody's saying put up your music for free, and um, that would, that's the way to go. But the truth is, is that, and this is what I would like to share this with musicians, especially young musicians that are coming up. That if you give away, if you if you post your entire song online, it 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 doesn't help the it it shows people that you you got a song and maybe it's a great song. But the fact is that you should only put thirty seconds to a minute up. That's Just, that up. Yeah. Well, but that's the same thing they do with the movie trailers. Sure. Yeah, right? I mean, they put the whole movie up, but then why would somebody go to the theater, right? So it's the same thing, same theory. Um, and I believe that, you know, if, if you feel that you have to put the whole thing, it seems it doesn't seem like anybody could go to your website and just listen to the song. They have no need to buy it. But if they hear a part of it and they say, wow, I really like that song, they're going to support you. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I've been, we've been experimenting with that quite a bit. Um, and it and it's it's true. When you put up the full song, nothing happens. When you put half of it up and promote it, something happens. So um, that's just that's a little tidbit right there that we wanted to share with you. But warnermusician.com is about uh, our main mission statement. Our main focus is on enhancing a musical economy. We want to do things to help artists to make more money, to uh, to bring things fairly because uh, it's. I don't think. You really can put your hundred percent into something if, every, if all you're doing is putting out money to perform, or you're just giving away your product. So, I believe that uh, this is something that need, needs to happen. And the, and the truth is that if artists are making money, it helps the society. It helps the you know it helps the community. They're spending money. People make more. It's like a job, basically. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. No question about it. Mm-hmm. And I know we have a, a lot of uh, young musicians, in particular, uh, listening to this program because we. We talk a lot about the uh, the music scene uh, locally, so this is probably uh, very beneficial to them, John. And I'm I'm sure some of them will be getting in touch with you uh, after uh, after our chat here today. But mm-hmm. really, the the internet has become uh, a great new platform for musicians, and now apparently they will be getting compensated for it. Yes, yes, uh, that's that because in the past, you know, YouTube, uh, you had to hit a certain number of views, yeah. and and uh, so. That that's kind of hard to do unless you create some crazy quirky video, right? That people laugh about, right? But basically now, um, like one thing that we're doing that's very interesting, and I invite all the uh, musicians from New Hampshire to, to uh, visit our website, is that um, or go on Facebook and check me out at uh, uh, facebook.com forward slash born a musician. Um, we're starting to do videos at no cost to the artist, and we came up with this idea because we're researching different search engine possibilities, right? So we put these little slideshows together. Um, it says the name of the artist. It says now on iTunes. It mentions uh, we show different photos and we, we basically it's a one minute to one minute and twenty second video promoting the artist. 
and all we do is we put our logos, we put a couple of mentions of what we do. But the cool part about it is, is that even though we pay to put it out there to advertise it, the artist is the one that gets paid for every single view. We don't get nothing from it. So if let's say, for example, one of these commercials, somebody really likes it a lot, and yep. it gets a million views, and, and hopefully it will, right? Then that artist just made themselves a lot of money just for signing up with our service. Oh, well, that, uh, that, that, that is really something. And, uh, now, I, I guess, you know, this, this trend is not only going to continue, but it, it's going to, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, really become uh, the norm, isn't it, uh, John, in the future? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going in that direction. It's actually happening in a lot of different um, areas. There, there's actually some, uh, it's interesting, I've been talking to some people uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, we had a big meeting about a, com a, a company that's uh, working coupons, and they're basically doing the same thing. They want to, to create things that create incentives for small business owners so they can put money back more into the community. And it's kind of like that, uh, that, that Richard Branson thinking, you know, if you have a, you know, if you have a product and that product does well in your community, at one point you should give back to the community. And that's very positive because it just comes back to you again. So, uh, the, the, you know, if, you, if there's a music scene, and, this, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to attack anybody because it's not what this is all about. It's just, this is about artists just getting paid fairly. If you have everybody performing or paying to perform, then what is that? What is that? What kind of message does that send out to the artist, right? Or how you know most musicians when they make money, they always spend it always on instruments. So if the music industry was to come together and help artists to make money, like they do in a lot of other countries, that actually they create incentives and there's actually uh, uh, what they call uh, they. In other words, if they're playing in a club and they're making a certain amount of money, the government puts in so much money, right? Okay. But, but let's say there's some incentives from different big music chains, uh, manufacturers, and this thing starts becoming a trend where musicians start to make money, it's only good to bring, bring, it's only good to bring money back in their pocket because there's, you know, a good, I've never met a guitar player that doesn't have more than one or two or three guitars, right? So, Very true, at least, yeah. Right, I mean, I have like 12 of them, <laughs> yeah. so, so, and I know a lot of guys who have a lot more than me <laughs> they just love collecting guitars yeah. so it it, 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 it it seems just to make sense that you should you know give back you know to to the to the community who's giving to you to, for you to live and um, so I, I just believe that's, that's I'm a main advocate of that type of thing I, I just I believe that artists should just be you know paid fairly and I'll tell you I'll share something with you about that because uh, I own a recording studio and a lot of young artists come to me and they say, and this is interesting because I'm 54 years old and I've got long hair and I've been a musician all my life and they come up to me, Mr. Seda, what do we do? And I go, please don't call me Mr. Seda, call me John, <laughs> right? And they go, no, Mr. Seda, we, we, you know, we need your help. And I go, well, first of all, guys, you, you can't go out there and perform for free. I mean, that's just not going to work. So sometimes I'll give them advice. I say, look, make your own backyard party and charge. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. Cre you know, create a buzz. You know, uh, go to a place and rent out a park, and sell tickets and make. You know, I did that when we we, we used to do that when we were young. And yeah. matter of fact, uh, one of the greatest rockers of all time, I consider one of the greatest guitar players, Eddie Van Halen, used to do that. Really? Yeah. Yeah, in California, yeah. they used to have those famous backyard parties, three dollars to get in, and that uh, you know, finally the record company took notice of it, and he, and you know, the rest was history, right? So, so uh, from there, right? Right. Yeah. So um, I think that it it you know I'm not saying that there's not venues out there that do that pay, but it, there's something really weird that's happening. And um, you know there used to be tours that used to go overseas, and you you would hear stories of a lot of older musicians that used to say, "Wow, I went to Europe. I went to you know I played over here." And now that's becoming a thing of the past. I mean that's um, I knew a guy that used to produce shows in uh, in uh, Germany and uh, Italy. And all that went to, you know, went away because of the, you know, the, the airfares. They don't want to pay for it anymore. Uh, right. They're trying to save money. And there's a lot of stuff. That, of course, the economy is bad, too. But I think that we, I think one thing that's happening, and I did notice this in this meeting I went to yesterday, and I, and I attribute this to the recession. The recession taught a lot of people how to think outside the box. So I think that now, even musicians, right now, we're living in an era 
that's a more business savvy era. And uh, there's a there's a tendency where musicians don't like to talk about business. Some of them don't or don't right. want to have to deal with it. But the truth is, everything that's being designed today is be, is being designed around business. Even if it's musical, it's designed for you to be able to make money with it. You just gotta you just gotta find the way and be creative. So you, and you probably have noticed on TV how many new different types of businesses have popped up that we never would have thought that 20 years ago, right? And they're become they're becoming very successful. I think that uh, because of the fact this recession came into into play, it, it actually forced a lot of people to you know start thinking and 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 to be, you know think that we got to find a way. We got to find a way to to bring the country back up too. And I believe that if we enhance the musical economy, because you know this was a billion dollar business before, sure. multi billion yep. dollar business. Now it's down to half. It there is some great statistic news. That music, as of 2012, sold more music in the history of music as a whole. That means indies and majors combined. Right. But individual artists as individuals are not doing well as far as individual sales, right? So, but the trend is going up. So the fact that Simon is doing this, uh, Simon Cowell is doing this on, on YouTube, it just shows you that it's finally coming together and a lot of these uh, companies that uh, designed a lot of great products you know service companies that for the musicians to be able to post their music online and stuff like that is finally turned around to where i'm seeing it's it's gonna we're gonna see greener pastures well that that is good to hear and, and you're right about the economy it uh, you know certainly uh, creates uh, you know, more creativity and, and, and different ways to uh, get the music out there. But in, in general, how has the economy affected the, the music business? I think it's, a, it, it's done some damage. I, I, I mean, you can't, you can't deny the fact that a lot of the venues are not being able to pay because they're not making enough money. But I think part of it, too, is, 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 is in a, uh, uh, one of, these, uh, one of my, uh, my webmaster told me this yesterday. He said it's really about environment. The environment has changed. And what he meant by that was most people now stay home and play games on their, you know, on their TV. So their tendency to go out, they'd rather stay home. And I wouldn't know if it has to do with being safe or not, but I think it has to do with uh, also you know, saving money. So um, that really get, uh, does affect shows because if people are not going out to spend money, then they're not going out to see those artists. So there is, there is a, and you know, there's a, there's a two-sided thing to that. But I think that if um, slowly but surely, uh, like the music manufacturers put their heads together and start thinking of ways for artists to, you know, creative ways for artists to make money um, and for them to make money also, right. because you yeah. know. I think that, that we can we can turn this around. I, I don't really see it as a negative thing. I think it's actually good because it actually it actually inspired me to do what I'm doing. I, yeah, well, that, and that's a good thing. And I, I'm looking at your website right now, bornamusician.com, and mm -hmm. uh, a very well designed website. Thank and you. Uh, and uh, folks uh, should check it out, especially those who are in the uh, the music industry right now and uh, want to get more exposure. Uh, check it out, bornamusician.com. Uh, John Seda, the uh, the uh, man who uh, put this all together and. Uh, uh, you've been in the music business for more than 30 years, so I, I think you would have to know a little bit about it. <laughs> I yeah. Think, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But you know how it goes. You, you go, it's, every musician will relate to this. It's all yeah. about feast or famine, and now I know how to get through the famine and save for well, the, the feast. That's, that's a good thing. Now, John, do you have a minute? Because we have a... Uh, very prominent local uh, musician on the line right now. Brooks Young of the Brooks Young Band okay. is uh, with us, and he, he, I'm sure, has a question for you. Okay, Brooks, how you doing? I'm hey, I'm doing well. How are you? Great, great. Say hello to John. I was, uh, I was just up at the recording studio with Brian Coombs, and we were talking about you and uh, the, the, how, how you're helping out with things, and uh, I was tuning in and stumbled across your conversation. Yeah. Cool. Have a question for John? Yeah. Uh, so, so, John, I... Uh, I see, you know, the, you're talking about the music scene and how, you know, different venues aren't, you know, paying musicians to come out and play. And as a musician myself, I, I would have to agree with you uh, 100% that, you know, a lot of places aren't paying musicians to come out and play as much as they used to. And, you right. know, we're having to 
find other means to you know make make income. Right. A lot a lot of bands what they're doing and this hap and this is happening in Europe too. They're making money actually from their CD sales, not so much from the door from the from the venue itself. If they're popular and they got a good following and their profile is high, then they'll sell a hundred CDs at a gig. But you should be able to make the money plus sell the hundred CDs, you know. Exactly, and um, you know we we play all over the place, but you know here in New Hampshire there are you know a few good places to play that respect you and you know pay you as if you're there to work. Right. And um, I think you're absolutely right about you know musicians having to find other ways as well and be creative. Right. Um, they that, have you know, to be. We're in a more business time of uh, things other than just playing out. Well, and uh, I just kind of wanted to call in and uh, say I agree 100 percent with you on that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And if and if you uh, feel free to free feel to contact me um, if you ever want to, so we can talk. I'm I'm, I'm a pretty uh, open guy. I like I like sharing with musicians and stuff because I'm one myself. So I'm re I really have a lot of passion for this. So you can contact me at john at risingsundigital.com if you have any questions. Awesome, cool. Yeah, and uh, we're, I'm Brooks Young, Brooks Young Band, and uh, we're brooksyoungband.com. And I uh, just wanted to call in and thank you for uh, getting the word out so people know what's up. Brooke, I have something for you. How about this? Do you have a great live shot of yourself, live, live picture? Oh, of course, yeah. We got hundreds, sure. Send me one because we'll pick one, and if it's okay with you, I'll post it on my website because we're looking for really good live shots, and I, that, that'll be a way I, for, on our part to see if we can help you. Excellent. All right. Sounds good. Okay. What right, is your email on. again, John? John, J-O-H-N, at Rising Sun Digital, R-I-S-I-N-G, S-U-N, like the sun above in the sky, and yep. digital.com. You got that, Brooks? I do, I got it. Thank and, you very and, much. and Brooks, you, you better come in one of these days and, and perform here on uh, Kale and Company. We we are. We were talking about that today. We got the show at the Capitol Center for the Arts coming up on May 9th. Yep. So, and you're going to be the first patient to play one of our new songs on the album. That's great. Well, Brooks, awesome. thank you. I appreciate awesome. it. And say hello to Brian for me. And uh, I will. always good to hear from you. Thanks, Brooks. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great day. Appreciate it. John, I, I know we've kept you longer than we anticipated, but it's a very uh, interesting topic. And like I say, we have a lot of uh, local musicians listening. And uh, I'm thank sure there will be more than one uh, getting in touch with you uh, after of course. this conversation. Well, this is what has to happen. Little by little, everybody puts in a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm, I've also talked to a lot of you know musicians when we grew up, and I said I've told to a lot of uh, older artists. I said, hey man, it's time to give back. Uh, you know, it's funny when I grew up, we never knew what a copyright was. We didn't know what publishing was. Nobody could tell us because nobody knew, and you didn't find out until you had to find out in other words it was right in front of you this is what's going to happen and 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 that really i think in the past hurt a lot of artists because they were signing things they didn't know what they were signing and right. they were afraid to walk away from something because they thought they would lose something but now the internet is available so you can type in and all this information is then is up there so I, I, I highly advise all the artists that they should visit sites like soundexchange.com that helps you get paid for your royalties uh, for internet play. Uh, they can go to bmi.com, ascap.com. They should be, be really in touch with all everything that they can find out about how they can benefit from writing a great song. Well, John, this has been terrific, and uh, appreciate your time, and uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll have you on again da down the road and, and talk about it some more. Thank you very much, Ken. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on the show, and a shout-out to all the musicians in New Hampshire. Woo! <laughs> very good, very good. John Seda, thank you so much, and we'll, we'll chat soon. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thanks Bye -bye. for being with us. John Seda, over 30 years in the music industry, and a very interesting guy, and uh, glad that uh, Brooks Young uh, called.